What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of CMA Podcast. How is everybody doing? Guys, this episode of CMA Podcast is brought to you by Lucerner Beer. Do me a favor, guys. People of the Lucerne area, go buy yourself at your local store a Lucerner beer. It is delicious. It is ice cold. It is so smooth, and I absolutely adore it. Yeah, there you go, guys. Sponsored by Lucerner Beer. Here's what I want you to do. Get yourself a beer. Take a picture of that beer in a cool place, somewhere where you're hanging out, at home, on the lake. Here's one I took during the week uh, down by the lake in Lucerne. Um, check out their store, like their, their brewery on Burgenstrasse. I think it's Burgenstrasse 16 in Lucerne Stadt Centrum. Um, just go buy a beer, take a picture, put it on your social media, tag them, tag us, um, and be in with a shot to go and get yourself a free case of beer directly from the brewery. Um, yeah, guys, they've put their trust in us. Uh, we absolutely love them. And, uh, and we just want to help local businesses with platforms just like this. Um, so that's the goal. And what I want you to do, as I said, is take a picture of yourself drinking the beer, put it on your social media, add this hashtag down here, at, no, not at, hashtag CMA Lucerner Beer. And every month, whoever has the coolest picture will get a free case of beer directly from the brewery. Um, awesome. So we're back again with another episode. Uh, guys, it's been a pretty crazy week and I received advice, very good advice during the week uh, from a friend and mentor. Um, negotiations, anything to do with the gym. Um, in real time, it, I'm, I'm, t I'm saying too much. Uh, whoever we're negotiating with, whoever we're talking to could see it in real time. And it's, it's just basically laying out your cards before the call. Um, so yeah, I'm going to keep my trap shut for a while when it comes to the gym and our plans and our negotiations. Um, but as, as of now, um, we almost have a deal done and I don't want to talk any more about that right now. Um, just for, for obvious reasons, I, I am. I realized how to grow a podcast is you got to be genuine. You got to be uh, upfront and, you know, it's working, but there's too upfront and there's too much information that goes out in real time. And I have to be very careful. Um, But yeah, training this week was pretty cool. Monday was sweet, cool sparring, some new guys here. Uh, you know, watching, watching a a complete novice watching someone who's is just exploring boxing for the first time uh, and watching their success and progress and you know it's it's super inspiring and then seeing someone who's quite good um, and watching them improve some techniques to get them to the next level is awesome and then obviously the the fighters the people who are motivated to get in there and get get their their knuckles red you know seeing all of that like there, there's there's levels to this you know in the words of daniel cormier um but my favorite my favorite thing it, it's not the fighter it's not the guy who's going to represent the gym it's not the guy who's hungry and you know that's all cool but seeing someone come in at the beginning hey i'm here to learn boxing i, I don't know how to throw a jab i don't know how to use my right hand i just want to learn it i'm not interested in fighting i'm not interested in sparring I'm just interested in learning this craft and seeing from day one to month three, the, the, the vital months when it comes to a boxer's existence is super, super inspiring. And um, it's something I look forward to seeing more and more of just from the perspective of a coach. It's like, all right, cool. You're here. You're motivated. You're consistent. You're coming back. I love it. You know what I mean? some good beer man um but yeah that's what we want more of i'm going to put out a huge advertising campaign uh next month depending on the direction of the gym 
whether we're going to be inside for the summer or whether or not um, we, we remain outside. I'm not too worried about it now. As I said, I'm not in a big rush to get back inside. Uh, I have my plan. I guess you call it a business plan. Um, and it's catering for two specific routes right now. Not a fallback, but just a contingency plan, we'll call it. Um, but yeah, some, some advertising campaign is going to go out hopefully at the end of ne next month. And uh, let's let's get some beginners. Let's let's try and you know get someone who wants to do it. But here's the thing about, especially with boxing, and I guess MMA to a certain extent. When it comes to beginning, when you talk to someone, or let's say I'm passing on the street and I talk to a friend, I'm like, "Hey, I do this. Would you be interested in coming?" And they're like, oh, no, you know, I have ah, black eyes and missing teeth and stuff. Stop. We got to change that perspective. We got to change that uh, persona of, of a fight gym, a combat sport place, you know. So for boxing, you go on your first night. Everybody assumes it's fight night. You're going to go home with like black eyes, missing teeth, you know, pulled muscles. and No, no, no. Everybody stop. We need to change the, the view or perception of, of, of gyms in that sense. Uh, you can come to boxing and never get hit. You can come to boxing and never be in the ring. You can come to boxing and just learn how to throw your hands. You know, that is such a, a misconception of a boxing gym, of a fight gym, you know. You can just hit the bag. You can just hit pads like your partner has the hands up like this. It's not all about sparring. It's not all about contact. It's not all about fighting. It's about learning how to throw and learning how to defend. And you have to have a coach that you can trust. And you have to be in a gym where you can trust your training. It's training partner at the end of the day. And uh, it's not training enemy. It's It's just... When I talk to people, especially over the last month, when I say, hey, come boxing. And the, the immediate reaction is no, because I don't want, you know, physical problems. You're not going to have any physical problems. You're just going to go. You're going to throw your hands. You're going to get your body moving. You're going to lose a bit of weight. You're, you know, you're going to do all the wonderful things that they're not promoting on the news, for example. Let's not go down that route. Um, but... Yeah, just like seeing a beginner come and, and learn how to throw a jab, learn how to throw the right, learn how to block a punch. It's awesome. For me, it's super, super inspiring to see, especially when they love it, when they're, when they're consistent and they come back. It's awesome. I love it. Uh, so that's, I guess, the issue with the gym right now. I'll say no more, um, but I'm positive. I'm very, very hopeful. I'm positive. And uh, let's see what happens. Um, but it's going to be a slow process that I can definitely say it's going to be a slow process. But we consistently every week will provide and offer training. Uh, as of April, again, depending on how it all goes, I'm going to have to start charging for classes. Anyone who doesn't know, if you're a new listener, we got out of the building that we were in. We decided we're going to give classes outside. I decided because I had a job. I'm not going to charge for classes. We're all just going to hang out. Making money right now is not a, a big priority. Money is already coming in. Um, so, you know, that that's what we were doing. So for the last year, classes have been for free. Um, there's issues with that from the perspective of a limited company in Switzerland. Um, it would mean changing the structure of the company um, I think I talked about this before, changing it to like a charity organization or a nonprofit. We're not a charity organization. We're not a nonprofit. So I got to start charging for classes. Uh, it will be incredibly competitive and that will be brought to everybody's attention, hopefully in the next two weeks. Uh, but if we get back indoors, it's business as usual, signing a contract three, six or 12 months. And, uh, and that's the plan. But uh, yeah, so switch gears. What happened this week? Uh, I'll backtrack. I'll backtrack to the fight card in London. UFC Fight Night London last weekend. Wow. 
it was, I said it when I did the breakdown, it was not a stacked card. And consistently the non-stacked cards are the ones that deliver. I should have, I should have said that. I should have acknowledged that. You get these hugely stacked cards and they end up being split decisions and everything is three and five rounds. There's no holy shit moments. But the London fighters, like not the London fighters, sorry, the uh, the UK fighters delivered. There were some unbelievable knockouts. There was some unbelievable striking. Phenomenal jiu-jitsu and wrestling from the UK fighters. Like anyone who knows combat sports, MMA, especially in UFC. The college wrestlers in the US who become MMA fighters dominate wrestling, the wrestling aspect of, of mixed martial arts. Uh, Ireland, UK, not so much. Then you go across to Eastern Europe, then Dagestan, Russia, you got all of these killers who are just like, you know, Khabib with his wrestling of bears when he was a kid. Um, you had these phenomenal takedowns and scrambles from the UK fighters this weekend. It was phenomenal. I won't touch on the whole card, but Tom Aspinall versus um, Volkanov. Unbelievable striking. A coach's dream when you've got a fighter who puts his punches together. Those vicious one-twos, not just a quick jab, not just a quick right hand, but these vicious combinations, these one-two left hooks, uh, uppercut left hook, straight right, two three-twos, double jab right hand, uh, fake overhand right into the single leg takedown. Um, all of these combinations were happening and it's like, you know, my coach Jake was telling me, God damn, these guys are like, it's like playing PlayStation. You just have the controller and yell it out and they do it. Phenomenal. Phenomenal to see. Uh, please tell me my computer does not need a reboot in the middle of this podcast. <clears throat> no, we're good. Almost had a freak out there. And yes, Meatball Molly McCann. Jesus. In the words of Nate, uh, Nick Diaz, we're, sp we're throwing spinning shit now. Unbelievable. That spinning elbow to the chin. Unbelievable knockout. Uh, Tom Aspinall I covered. Um, now I want to talk about what what is being said in the news and what is being said and repeated and regurgitated by people who just don't truly know what they're talking about and it's just being reposted and then this narrative comes in. Paddy Pimlet is this new, hyped, amazing fighter. Goofy looking motherfucker. Um, he's being pushed by the machine. Dana White is behind him. And his salary came out. His, his purse came out for fight night at the weekend. Pretty much, pretty well, pop the P there. Pretty much sold out the O2 Arena. A uh, huge hype behind him. And he got $12,000 to fight and $12,000 to win. And people are like uproar online when it comes to the monopoly that is UFC. We talked about it on. Um, this podcast with Burt Green from the Burt Locker. Check out his stuff. Um, fighter pay is a huge topic for discussion. But what people don't understand is when you're on your initial UFC contract, you agreed to the salary that they're giving you. I think it starts at 10,000 to fight, 10,000 to win, 12,000 to fight, 12,000 to win. And 14,000 to fight, 14,000 to win. That's your first three fights. You find a three fight contract. And what's being exposed is Sugar Sean O'Malley, if you know who he is, he's deliberately, and he's going by the textbook on how you should do this. He's on his initial UFC contract, 
since the contender series or whatever the hell he came through through the Dana White looking for a fight or whatever it was um he's basically this hyped awesome fighter declining to fight fights of guys in the top 15 because he's on his initial contract if you're on your initial contract you're getting paid peanuts so you got to wait until you get to your second last fight and they try and renegotiate and sign you uh, for another fight contract deal before your last fight on your contract that's how it works so fight these up and comers don't go ahead and fight all right i've won two fights in the ufc now i'm ready for the the, the next guy in line for the title and i beat him and i get a title shot but you're going to get paid, paid peanuts you're on your first contract so fight out your contract fight nobodies build yourself up make sure you fucking win and renegotiate paddy pimlet is going to be bigger than Conor McGregor. Fact. If he keeps winning. That's why I respectfully declined to be a professional fighter because I didn't give a fuck about winning. I just wanted to get in there and have fun. You know what I mean? But when it comes to fighting and UFC and contracts and money and uh, money, financial compensation, you got to win. You have to win. You have to keep your leverage. You have to keep keep your 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 brand. It has to be like I can't fight for this amount of money. I bring all of this. Uh, interesting fact: I went to Conor McGregor's uh, second and third fight. Conor McGregor's third fight in the UFC was against Diego Brandao. Virtually the same circumstances as Paddy Pimlet this weekend. The O2 Arena, I think it may be three arena now in in, uh, in Dublin, sold out, huge atmosphere, unbelievable uh, TKO victory. Conor McGregor was the man, the lights were on him, and the whole crowd went absolutely fucking nuts. It was electrifying. He got paid 16000 to fight that day, and he got paid 16000 to win. He also had a performance of the night bonus of fifty thousand dollars. That is eighty-two thousand uh, dollars. So obviously, when you take out tax, uh, when you take out paying percentages of agents, managers, uh, your expenses for the fight camp, I think he may have walked away with into his bank, cash in hand, ten thousand dollars for that fight, and he electrified Dublin that night. So just to give you a little bit of perspective, uh, Paddy, Pim Paddy Pimlet fought that night, got 12000 to fight, 12000 to win, $50,000 fight bonus. The difference between Paddy Pimlet and Conor McGregor is Paddy Pimlet is signed to Barstool Sports. Barstool Sports, this media guy, Dave Portnoy, the, one of the main reasons I set up this podcast and look to get local business sponsors such as Lucerne Beer, drink a Lucerne Beer, post it on Instagram, hashtag CMA Lucerne Beer to be in with a free, uh, an opportunity to get a free case of beer directly from the brewery. <clears throat> Great plug. Um, but he signed a seven-figure sponsorship deal with Barstool Sports. Now, seven figures, is that a million? Is that nine and a half million? Who knows? But it's undisclosed. Conor McGregor didn't have any of that. Conor McGregor was just big in the uh, small circle of MMA and only really became huge when he beat Jose Aldo, when he went on to beat um, Alvarez, and when he fought Floyd Mayweather. Um. Paddy Pimlet, if he keeps winning, if he keeps winning, will be bigger than Conor McGregor. My opinion. I'm rooting for him to be bigger than Conor McGregor. I love Paddy Pimlet. I love his attitude. He's one of the guys, you know, the hair can, could do with a shave for the love of God. But I absolutely adore what he's doing. 
and he's going to I think he's going to be bigger than Conor McGregor uh, just my opinion but uh, yeah looking through some facts yeah Conor McGregor's initial contract he was pretty big but he didn't have the machine behind him from the get-go and Paddy has two fights in the UFC and is already a superstar his social media has exploded people know who he is he's unique he's just got to keep winning and I think he's got the skill set to do it so let's see what happens there but yeah great fight night in London God bless those British people love them all of them uh, another quick word from a sponsor guys Guys, this episode is also brought to you by lolatong.com. You've heard me talk about them before. I'm going to keep talking about them. Again, a local business here in Lucerne. Fashion, something that I'm trying trying my best to get better at. Yes, I'm wearing a Thin Lizzy hoodie right now. It's because I like Thin Lizzy. I like all of their music. But I'm not talking about Thin Lizzy now. I'm talking about lolatong.com. Go to lolatong.com. Have a look at their fashion their accessories i got the dad hat right now and i fucking love the dad hat if you go to checkout and hit cma in the promo code section you get 10 percent discount they are awesome if you want to look good and i say it all the time i'll keep saying it cleaning your apartment someone drops by you're in your lola tongue outfit you're good you're covered uh when you want to head into town for a spontaneous cup of coffee with a friend you haven't seen in a while, when you want to go for a quick, and again, spontaneous, you're not going to spend two hours getting ready in the bathroom. You're going to be ready to go while you're cleaning your apartment. Little bit of spray, you're good. Lolatong.com, go to their website, check out their stuff. They have some awesome stuff for both males and females because there's only two genders. So here's what you do. You go to checkout, you get your you get your price, you get 10% discount when you tell them that we sent you promo code CMA for a 10% discount. Lolatong.com. Go there and be satisfied. All right, we're back. Lolatong.com. Lucerner beer. Who else wants some? You want to get on this podcast? You want me to talk about your products, your services, your company? Reach out. And my people will get on to your people. And we will sit and we will negotiate. He's trying to be an actor again. It's ridiculous. <clears throat> now, guys, I'm just having fun. It's great. Set up your own podcast. Talk as much shit as you want. It's fun. Um, yeah, what else is there, guys? MMA world. I haven't really written anything down. I like to just go. And if I forget something, I kick myself after. Uh, bad news. Two bad news is, is, is this week. Uh, bad news number one, glory kickboxing. Does anybody here care to share in the comments their opinion on glory kickboxing? Um, it, was, it was every fan's worst nightmare, especially if you're going to go with your friends and you just want to watch good fights. Uh, I guess there was this very heavily promoted fight between, uh, geez, I don't know, a Turkish dude and a Polish dude. And um, yeah, the coordination of the fans right before the fight was supposed to happen. Everyone took off their shirt and started throwing chairs and the fight kind of was canceled and the police were called and the event was shut down and you know it was pay-per-view so you had to purchase it from the website so everybody got a refund and it's uh you know kind of a really shitty thing to have happen especially i've been fight i've been to fights i've been to fights drunk and sober and when a fight breaks out i just want to get the hell out of there find the exit get out it's not a cool story to say and then these six guys came and i you know knock them all out no, it's too dangerous. You will die. You will be in big trouble. So go check out uh, Glory Kickboxing on YouTube and just type in, I don't know, um, crowd fight or whatever. It's a scary thing. These big, big Turkish dudes and these big Polish dudes just collided. And uh, cops were called. Riot police came in. People were running. There was, ki there was kids there. 
Don't bring your kid to a fight night. And um, yeah, crazy, crazy stuff. And then the second bad news, God damn it, man. This is super disappointing because the decline of Jorge Masvidal is becoming worse than the decline of John Jones and and uh, Conor McGregor combined. Uh, Colby Cummington fought last week, uh, a couple of weeks ago against Jorge Masvidal. They're both from Miami. They both have a history of friendship, loyalty, trust, and disgust. They hate each other now. They fought for 25 minutes. It ended with Kobe, Co- Kobe Covington winning. And then they see each other apparently in a steakhouse during the week. And Jorge put on a mask, ran up to the side of him, and started punching him in the head. Sir, you had 25 minutes, is the quote from Daniel Cormier. You had 25 minutes to do it, and now you decide to do it, and it's a felony. I always say, boxing, MMA, whatever, jiu-jitsu, it's the most fun you can have without getting arrested. And he goes and soccer punches Kobe, and now he's facing felony charges, and it's all depending on if Kobe wants to press charges. And I think he will just to teach him a lesson, but it's just... Ugh, guys, come on. We're trying to represent the sport here. We're trying to have a good persona on us not being animals, fighting on the street, shaved head tattoos, you name it. And you go and do this? Jorge, sir, come on, man. You're better than this. You were the BMF. I don't know. Fuck. It's tough. It's tough. But hey, what are you going to do? Uh, We got some cool fights coming up over the next couple of weeks. I will have another guest come on, I think, next week. On top of that, Burt Green is coming back on the podcast for a UFC 273 breakdown. Um, Always like talking to Burt, despite the fact that he's British. But we have transcended these cultural boundaries over the last 400 years. And uh, yes, they have the six in the north, but we have the 26 in the south. And I'm not holding any grudges. Or am I? I don't know. He's trying to be an actor again. It's fucking ridiculous. Guys, uh, I'm very, very tired. I'm very, very hungry. So I'm going to get off this one now. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much. Uh, The views are going up. I'm rather surprised. I thought people had enough of me now, but the views are going up. And I am very happy with that. Um... The only thing that helps, guys, is interaction. So click the clicking of the like button is, is so important. The quick, fast comment is so important. If you see it on my Facebook, just click share. Have your friends listen to me if you want. But I would appreciate um, more likes, more comments, and more shares. Uh, subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Um, you know, just I, I'm doing my best here trying to get genuine unique and entertaining content out there Uh, not many f-bombs today so i'm very happy about that but what i want is more guests that's the ultimate goal i don't like talking into this microphone by myself i like to bounce a conversation if you have anything to say about anything politics religion uh, corruption the banking system taxes music fighting you name it I'll sit down and I'll talk to you about it on this podcast. I want more guests. I want to bounce more conversations. Um, Do me a favor. Just hit the like button. Just hit me with a quick comment. You've no idea how precious that is and how much it helps. Algorithmically speaking. Is that even a word? I don't know. Guys, thank you very much for listening once again. We will be in touch. Follow us on social media at City Martial Arts on Instagram and also CMA Lucerne on Facebook. That's all I have to say today. Guys, thank you very much, and rock and roll.